So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, because at the cafe gallery I would start open mics early, um, because I was there early and people weren't set up right away, I'd be reading from things. But I'd be talking about things that are going on in Chicago, like the Bears have won two games in a row, <laughs> which I don't think has happened for like eight years. That tells you the quality of the team. Sniff, sniff. But I would say that this is not a LeBlanc shirt. This is a Forte shirt for 22. And uh, he was a great player, as was Devin Hester, number 23. And when they were, they were both traded away from the Bears, but they decided that when they were going to retire, they, they confirmed with each other and they said, we should see if we can get a one-day contract with the Bears so that we can retire as Bears players and not as you know whatever other team took us away from the Bears and they told so totally we're willing to do that the Bears and that was really kind of cool so um yeah and I suppose if I'm going to be starting early I'd be talking football or something that's totally non-literary related but um that's how we roll here I guess welcome to this 2020 installment I guess of the Cafe Gallery book reading series because at the beginnings of uh, times when posts would be as always late and I had a start on time, I would start by reading something from a recently released Scars Publications book. And so I thought I would read a bit, a bunch of pieces from this huh, Down in the Dirt February to April 2020 issue collection book that is titled Foundations. Foundations. And it's a cool book and it's got a bunch of issues in it so I was going to read to you some pieces that were in one section of this book. I hope you enjoy them um, but I thought I'd start with a couple of short ones because oftentimes when I would get acceptances there would just be a little room left on a page not enough for a whole new piece of writing so I have a couple of short pieces that I'll start with in this book for you. Uh, this first one is called A Vein. We wanted to be close to you. You were family, but you changed your behavior. You, you pushed us away until we were so far away it was like we didn't exist. But the thing is, it was like you were so far gone that it breaks our hearts now that we had to find out from strangers a month after you passed away. None of us are perfect. If only we could have worked together in a vain effort to truly make a difference. <laughs> and then nearby on another page, I have a piece. It flipped. Very good. And I pull out a bookmarker from it that tells you from COVID-19 screening that I have passed. So not that I'm near anybody <laughs> to worry about infecting anybody, but uh, I don't have COVID-19 and I'm still trapped here. So this is a piece in here that is called No Completeness. The completeness of my being only came when I heard your breathing. They all knew I gave you life, but know that your life gave me new life. Now that you're here, my life now has meaning. It's fun hearing these pieces that accompany pieces that were prose within issues. So, it's, especially when they're so different, like this one, that is just a couple pages away, called "Aha!" Here it is. Quickly, life can turn. Let me get to the page. Here we go. Most days are just that, average, uneventful. The monotony can become your purgatory, but know how quickly life can turn in an instant beyond your control. So embrace every moment, cherish the details, revel in life. People who happen to know me would probably know way too much what, how I would do. Uh, how that would affect one me. Uh, I've got a bunch of sections of poems here that I'm going to share with you. Longer ones are from the back of this section. Uh, this first one, haha, ha, actually was written on Texas Independence Day. And it's called Each Trigger Pull. Once I 
got to the gun range today, I saw that the rifle range was closed and learned that a real estate company was considering buying the land just past the range. So they got an injunction, a court order, to stop the gun range firing guns toward their extended land. I'm not sure if they actually found any extended bullets or casings there or expended bullets or casings there. As far as I know, no one has brought that land yet, so now they just sit here and wait. The way the Republic of Texas waited nine years to be a part of the United States of America after claiming their independence on March 2nd, which happens to also be the birthday of Sam Houston, who led Texans to victory over Mexico in the Battle of San Jacinto which may be a reason these Texans have seem to have a stronger attachment to their guns than a lot of other states, because they know far too well from their own history how vital it was to embrace these firearms to preserve their lives. And that may be something other states in this union have forgotten. We can turn a blind eye to violence and think that it will never touch us when it probably is lurking just around the corner, and no one knows it. As I sit here in one of the bays at this gun range now, I now wear protective eyeglasses and ear mufflers, ear gear with enough force to protect my ears and enough pressure to crush my skull. Watching the smoke from every shot rise from that gun in front of me, I am still hearing that 9 mil pistol and the rifle shots fired around in our bay, as well as the AR-15 shots fired in the bay next door. Each trigger pull releases a thunderous boom, and it almost reminds me of fireworks uh, right here on Texas Independence Day. The noise is something that seems so strong, but really, like fireworks, it's only something that reminds me of celebration and celebrating. Okay, let me change the page for you to the next one for you guys. Ha ha! This one was written on March 12th, which was National Alfred Hitchcock Day, in case anyone was curious. And I thought it would be appropriate to write this one for you. It's called Vanishing Psycho in the Rear Window. This is called Vanishing Psycho in the Rear Window. Ha ha. Written on March 12th, which is National Alfred Hitchcock Day. From the book Foundations, which is a Down in the Dirt, uh, February to April 2020 issue collection book. And as I said, this is called Vanishing Psycho in the Rear Window. Ever since leaving the hospital, everything now comes to you like some sort of a surreal movie where everything seems so proper, like life exists in black and white. <laughs> black and white, cut and dry. They're either too nice to you or they want to kill you dead. <sighs> so start strenuously searching to try to see the full color truth. Everyone seems cordial to you. Almost too nice is all you think when you're sure they only say half-truths whenever you ask, so you know you can trust no one. The harsh punishment you faced mentally from those who claimed to love you still fills you with more terror and more suspense, wondering how everything ends. You stay behind the camera lens. You try to record everything so you can cover your tracks and stay out of the limelight. You think it works, but they still turn to you. Nonetheless, so beware your dear old mommy. Stay clear of anything who that may try to do you in. Avoid high places where someone may try to push you to your death. But still, your danger may come from above. So beware the birds circling like mass daggers above. Beware. <laughs> you know that you are hunted now, being the one who knows too much. Even avoid strangers on a train because the lady can vanish in a flash and no one will know your malaise and your misery are like M for murder, even in the privacy of your own home. So 
double lock all of your doors. Hope that you've covered all your bases. Blinds stay closed. Close the drapes. Put towels over the bathroom door. And just try to relax in the shower. <laughs> I hope you guys like that one. I'm sorry that I'm having a hard time finding the pages for it. Now I'm going to flip to the next page for you. Aha. I'm not going to do that one. That was read before, joining the grave robbing crew. This one. Haha. -ha. This one from the book Foundations from Down in the Dirt, the February 2. April 2020 issue collection book is a poem that was written on 3.1415, no, 3 slash 14 slash 20. This is called The Value of Pi and appears in this book. And I flip the page open. All right, there you go. This is called The Value of Pi. <sighs> Why is this number with far too many decimal places so important anyway? They say the area of a circle is pi r squared, but the Bible will tell you that must mean that pi is three. No decimals, just three, because it was based on the number of cubits to make it around a circle. Actually, a rabbi later argued that the Bible could be correct if in the Bible they measured the inside of a pot to define the circle versus the outside. <laughs> What an ingenious way to work around that biblical inconsistency. I, I don't know if the number of decimal digits is always that important, because back in 1969, the number 3.1416 got man to the moon without all those extra decibels. I mean, in the, even in the transcripts of the famed O.J. Simpson trial, you can hear arguments between the judge and the FBI agent about the actual value of pi. And speaking of the Simpson trial, to quote Peter Bachman in his 1970 book, The History of Pi, quote, three centuries ago, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, co-inventor of the calculus and co-director of the first infinite series for pi, dreamt of the day when courts would be abolished because disputes could be settled mathematically by solving impartial equations that would show who was right and who was wrong. <laughs> Beautiful idea, isn't it? Using math to explain the universe, as physicists have been trying to do for years, like Albert Einstein, known for other equations, who was born on 3.14 of 1879. Apparently, pi is that much of a big deal that you can find pi in the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Yeah, the vertical height of the pyramid and the perimeter of its base have the same relationship, the radius of the, to the circle, as uh, has to its circumference. And really, this pi number, Archimedes constant, which is the 16th letter in the Greek alphabet, is such an irrational number, since it can't be defined as a fraction, and probably why I'll never remember enough of the numbers in, for pi in the first place, and why, when astronomers didn't have massive computers or extensive calculators in the 1960s, that's when they settled for 3.1416 for pi. Historically, the number for pi has been used as early as 4000 BC, and at each time in history, from Egypt to China to India to Persia, only an approximation was used. Because this number of non-repeating, non-ordered numbers is to infinity is a number we all have wanted to understand throughout history. I mean, people obsess with pi so much that they can even show you their birthday in pi. There's actually a website for this. You can find your birthday in pie somewhere. I, I, I don't know. To some pie, maybe a tasty, tasty dessert treat. But when it comes to math, anyone, for one reason or another, is fascinated by this infinite series. Because, really, it amazes us that one specifically weird number, that one so transcendental number, can mean so much to so many people in so many ways throughout the world. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm going to give you guys two more. They won't be as long as that one, but they're going to be weird. And they're going to be totally different because when you're picking on dates like this, you can find crazy things that happen from one day to the next. 
And this is going to be a weird one to do because it was written on March 19th, which is the calendar day that Adolf Hitler signed the Nero Decree in 45. This is going to be weird. <sighs> Brace yourselves. <laughs> this one is called Zeal Was Unbridled. Slaving, I risked my life. And in this struggle, I had a vision the entire fatherland would ultimately embrace. This was your salvation. You begged for it. Your zeal was unbridled. But as time wore on and the masses, the masses were too blind to truly fulfill your destiny. You don't understand. I earned the Iron Cross for my unbridled heroism. I fought in the streets for the right kind of government for my people. And I changed my life so I could be your servant. And now, now you all betray me so. I have always fought, and that has been my decree since the beginning, to never surrender. And as I continue to fight, all I see around me now are cowards. You should want to die instead of turning your tail to run. Deserter. You deserted your destiny. Not me. This is only proof to me that it was never your destiny after all and each one of you should perish and if enemies come to take over my land we should leave them nothing only a scorched earth and since my people stopped fighting let them die too i i, I want to make this clear it was not my vision that was faulty it was your inability to fulfill your goals and ultimately to make this empire reign a thousand years. Your unbridled love for all these ideals should have sustained you. So, you have no one to blame but yourself. <sighs> That's the weird one. All right, I'm going to the last poem for you guys, and it's a total change of pace one from that one. This is from the book, Foundations. <laughs> and it is written on and for Lent, and it's called Xenogeny. X-E-N-O-G-E-N-Y, Xenogeny, written for Lent. Give me this time after the richness of our foods and our excess drink, wallowing in our wealth with our gluttonous indulgencies, please allow me this time. As days grow longer, I'll need this time to reflect on myself, to contemplate the world, to reach a better understanding and connection. Consider this penance for all I have done, and trust me, I will keep all my strength as I sacrifice all during these 40 days and 40 nights to focus on what I truly need and what I truly believe. My soul has been too old to die so young. So this is why I need this time to reflect and realize what more I must do to make the world worth celebrating again. Please, I, I think you have understood that I am so completely different from those around me and those before me. So let me now have this time so I can piece it all together once and for all. Wait for my return. Believe me, the reward will be worth the wait. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you like that segment of the reading series from this book, Down in the Dirt magazine. Scars.tv slash dirt is all the info that you can get to if you're interested in submitting right to Down in the Dirt magazine or to CCD magazine, scars.tv slash CCD, and there's info there for you guys. And, uh, and you could have your stuff in not only issues, but larger issue collection books or annual collection books and have more reasons to share the literary scene with the world. I hope everyone is remaining safe 
first of all, uh, poetically inclined, <laughs> literarily inclined, musically inclined. I was hearing music upstairs at the beginning of this thing, but I hope everyone is remaining safe and everyone who is still out there and stuck and feeling alone right now because of quarantine times from the coronavirus and COVID-19, just know that you are loved. Each and every one of you, just know that. Um, continue, remain safe, and I will do another reading for you next week from this book, and who knows, I got some other books here that might come up in future weeks as well. So, everyone stay safe, know that you're loved, and thank you all for listening. Thank every single one of you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.